welcome friends let's study about uh, the ovaries right so ovaries is an endocrine organ which is present only in the female bodies and um, it is important for development of the uh, secondary sexual characteristics of the female as well as it plays a role in the conception of the uh, of the fetus within the female body okay so it's a very important organ and it's only present in the female bodies and its counterpart in the males is the testis so we have dealt with uh, the study of testis in another video so here in this video we will look only into the ovaries so the ovaries if you see they're a pair of over producing organs so over producing over means egg okay so egg producing organs then uh, the part of the female reproductive system so they called as gonads and gonads means sex organs so it is uh, an endocrine gland because it is import it is it plays a role in production of hormones so what kind of hormones are produced by the ovaries we have the estrogen and progesterone so the estrogen and progesterone uh, hormones have a role to play not only in uh, developing of the sexual uh, characteristics but it also and um, it plays a role in the in the during the menstrual cycle and also in fertility so let's look into the anatomy of the ovaries so they are oval shaped structures and they are whitish in color and they are the size of a large grape okay so oval shape about the size of a large grape and they are whitish in color then um, where is it located so they're located alongside the lateral wall of the uterus and that place is called as the ovarian fossa along the lateral wall of the uterus that place is called as the ovarian fossa so they are attached to the fimbria so that's the tissue that connects the ovaries to the fallopian tube so the ovaries are connected to the fallopian tube by means of the fimbria okay so this is how it uh, the female reproductive system looks like here we have the uterus and we have the fallopian tubes okay so the fallopian tubes fimbria is attached to the ovary and the ovary is connected to the uh, uterus by means of the ovarian ligament so this is the ovarian ligament here and this is the infundibular uh, pelvic ligament okay that at helps in attaching to the fallopian tube so this is the endometrial lining and this is the myometrium which is the outer lining endometrium forms the inside lining and then there's the cervix right so this is a cervical region and below which um, is an opening which is called as the vagina with the vaginal opening so here is a picture of a dissected view of the ovaries so if we have uh, dissected the ovary we can see the ovum we can see the primary follicles the uh, the primary follicles so here is the ovum okay initially the primary follicles will be present the primary ovum and this is developing now into the secondary ovum here right so the follicles have also increased in in number right so this is called as the mature follicle or the graafian follicle and it comes to a stage in which there is uh, a ruptured follicle right so during um, the ruptured follicle what happens is the liberated uh, the ovum is liberated out and then there is an early corpus luteum which forms the corpus albicans later so this gets atrophied in the case of uh, fertilization or when pregnancy has happened this corpus luteum will be atrophied so the ovaries are surrounded by a capsule so structurally if you see there is a surrounding of the ovaries by the capsule and that uh, is called as a tunica albuginea right and uh, ovaries have an outer cortex as well as an inner inner medulla so the outer layer is the ovarian cortex so it consists of follicles and stroma in between so what is uh, where is the follicles present in the outer ovarian cortex now the inner layers is called as the ovarian medulla but there is no follicle present inside the inner layer so no follicles in the ovarian medulla so usually during a menstrual uh, cycle what happens is ovulation occurs in one of the two of the ovaries so either in either of the ovaries is where ovulation occurs 
So the side of the ovary closest to the fallopian tube is connected to the fallopian tube by means of infundibular pelvic ligament, okay, and then there is formation of fimbria of the fallopian tube, correct. And then the other side will point downwards towards the uterus and that joint of the ovary and the uterus is called as the ovarian ligament. So uh, we will check into the different kinds of hormones secreted by the ovaries. So we have estrogen, androgen, inhibin and progesterone, right. So uh, let us look into these hormones. So the estrogen hormone is important because it plays a role in developing of the development of the sexual, uh, the secondary sexual characteristics in the uh, female bodies. So it happens, it plays a very important role at puberty and also in maintenance of reproductive organs and their um, functional state. So the primary estrogen is called as estradiol. Okay. Now the role of progesterone is seen when it prepares the body for pregnancy and also in the development of the mammary glands for lactation. So the mammary glands uh, for lactation is taken care of and also the body is taken care of for uh, the pregnancy purpose. So pregnancy functions with estrogen in promoting the menstrual cycle. So this is another role and in the changes that is needed in the endometrium lining. Now there are uh, changes within the female bodies or within the ovaries when there is uh, release of hormones okay so the first uh, so we will see uh, how the uh, the different hormones come into picture now all the hormones are not produced together so the production of one will lead to and or induce the production of the next and the production of that will in, induce the production of the other hormone so it's a cycle it's a, it's a, a stepwise process so the first hormone to be produced will be the follicle stimulating hormone so this is produced by the pituitary gland Okay, so the purpose of the follicle stimulating hormone is in to increase estrogen in the first part of the cycle. So it, it is important for the growth of follicles. So the follicle stimulating hormone will help in the production of follicles. Now when the follicles have uh, been formed, what we can see is there will be rise of estrogens. So the estrogen rise will cause a decrease in the follicle stimulating hormone and another hormone is now increased that is the luteinizing hormone okay. So the luteinizing hormone is now is what will cause ovulation or the formation of ovum. So when the ovulation phase occurs what happens is the levels of luteinizing hormone and estrogen will increase rapidly. So first is a follicle stimulating hormone which will act on the uh, ovaries to produce follicles. So when the follicles have increased, uh, have been formed, there will be an increase in estrogen. So when the estrogen level rises, the FSH levels will decrease and the luteinizing hormone levels will increase. Now the luteinizing hormone will be the hormone responsible for ovulation, that is the production of ovum. Now, during the ovulation phase, there will be increase in uh, a more increase in number of in the levels of luteinizing hormone and estrogen. So the follicle becomes uh, corpus luteum as we saw in the diagram. So it eventually becomes corpus luteum which produces estrogen and progesterone. So corpus luteum will initially produce estrogen and progesterone. So that happens between the 8th and 9 days after ovulation has happened. So if there is lack of ovulation, what happens is the corpus luteum will, uh, will be degenerated. Okay. So the lack of ovulation will cause degeneration of corpus luteum. So if corpus luteum has uh, died out or has got uh, degenerated, the decrease is seen in the levels of estrogen and progesterone. So when there is a decrease in the estrogen and progesterone levels, so the endometrial lining is not maintained. So this uh, blood uh, blood wall lining that is seen in the within the uterus, the endometrial uh, lining, that will be sloughed off, and there will be release of uh, there will be a release of it uh, in in the woman's body. It happens periodically, and that process is called as menstruation. 
So after the menstruation has occurred, after the, uh, the endometrial lining has been sloughed off and gone out of the uh, body, then the cycle starts all over again, okay, uh, with the induction of the FSH. So we'll just look into some of the terms associated with the ovaries and the uh, hormones of the ovaries. So there is a condition called as hyperestrinism. Okay. So hyperestrinism means there is excess of estrins produced, excess of estrins produced in the body. So that usually causes bleeding. Okay. So it causes functional bleeding in the uterus. Now in the case of um, in the case of the female or the or the, or the females which have or the girls, okay, which have not yet entered uh, puberty. So, if there is excess of estrins in their body, that will lead to early onset of puberty. Okay. So, in the case of of the person who have who is already uh, entered into the puberty and has in which in whose body the ovulation cycle has started. So, in those people, if excess estrins are produced, it will lead to irregular and excessive menses. So, the menses cycle will be heavy with a lot of uh, bleeding. Then in the case of menopause women where ideally uh, their menstrual cycle has stopped, okay, but if excess extrins have been produced, that will result in resuming of uterine bleeding. So another condition is called as the precocious puberty in which the, uh, the female body attains uh, its sexual uh, secondary sexual characteristics even before the age of 8, okay. So that young uh, uh, girl will show secondary uh, sexual characteristics okay so then another term associated is the infertility and irregular menses so infertility refers refers uh, to the case in which there is no egg formation so this can happen in a female body and um, when there is no proper egg formation it could be because of the uh, various um, uh, levels of the hormones or it could be a problem with the uh, uterus lining or any, anything can cause the non-production or non-formation of the ovum. Now, a condition called as postmenstrual bleeding can happen in women who have who are in their menopausal phase, but bleeding occurs uh, because of an endometrial carcinoma or a cervical carcinoma. So, it is not a normal situation. And if bleeding occurs in, a, in, in women who are in the menopausal phase, they have to be really careful because it could be uh, a carcinoma condition. Then there can be a case of delayed puberty in which even after the uh, female bodies or the, uh, the individual, the girls have reached the age of 16, still they have not experienced the menses cycle. So uh, that, is a, that is called as delayed puberty. Now, Absence of menstrual cycle is called as amenorrhea, uh, amenorrhea and when it happens to a person that means if the puberty has, uh, has been delayed. So that kind, kind of menorrhea is called as primary amenorrhea. So what happens is the, the sexual, secondary sexual characteristics are visible, are seen but what happens is there is no uh, menstrual cycle. Then another uh, situation in which prime, uh, this amenorrhea condition is seen is when uh, there is a genetic disorder called as the Turner's syndrome. So in Turner's syndrome what happens is the, the ovaries have not developed properly and therefore there is a, de a delayed menstrual cycle. Then in amenorrhea means there is absence of the menstrual cycle or the periods. So this happens, it can happen um, at uh, particular stages of uh, in, a, in a woman's life that is before uh, as a girl and before they have reached the age of puberty they have not they, there is no menstrual cycle during that time and also during the uh, pregnant phase the pregnancy phase there is no menstrual cycle and after menopause there is no menstrual cycle so even during the reproductive phase the woman undergoes absence of menstruation so that she can miss out her periods and that condition is called as amenorrhea. Okay. Thank you.